Right, so. Maybe there's some breathing exercises with me on. Oh, 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 o
and he got me onto this forum called the uh, Scottish Comedians Forum, uh -huh. and that's basically that's an eye opener for any comedian, especially yeah. in Scotland, because you're sitting there and you're, you don't know what's going to come around the corner, and you just yeah. you're looking for something, and there's always guys up there going, we need somebody to do like a ten minute slot here, yeah, and try and fit you into their kind of grand scheme of pretty much Friday and, night, yeah, and you have to sell yourself in a way, you have to get a yeah. you have to make yourself out as the high class prostitute going, get me here, yeah. So I mean, obviously this this year's festival was jam packed. It was as far as this part of town is concerned. I, mean, I was coming through on the bus the other day. I couldn't see for the freaking crowd. You yeah, know, I yeah. Might as well have been pressed up against the bus windows like some bad zombie movie. But mm. uh, so it was absolutely banging this summer. But um, in terms of the last few months, have you seen that your style has changed at all? Well, Would I mean, I get, I get evolved in any way. It is, it is slowly evolving. Yeah. Like, I mean, um, I'm not a storyteller, but I'm starting to tell little short stories. Yeah, so it's less anecdotal. Your style. No, no, I mean, I, I, I do like the anecdote. I do like some anecdotes. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a skill to master a good anecdote. I find, yeah. you know. But I mean, I, I try to keep as much anecdotes as I possibly can involved with the same idea for a joke that I have. Yeah. Because if it relates well, then I can, then the joke works well for me. Yeah, exactly. But that's yeah. just my own personal fear. I mean, my first proper set, set list was just, you know, yeah. me, it was a taster. It was just, this is what I'm like, this is the kind of material I'm yeah. telling. Then come to my second set uh, that I done, that I wrote for the Curtain House. Yeah. It was it was all about, uh, I started to kind of, well, what if I started joking about this? And the second thing I started joking about was me talking about how much I can't bear people. Yeah. And some things that people say and do and things like that. One thing I've always wanted to talk about actually, because let's rewind the clock, let's jump in the time machine. We're going to take you back yonder, and I remember about Marty. Marty! <laughs> huh? Marty! Marty! You gotta come back with me. What is this? Oh, it's uh, it's, it's weather equipment. Uh, it's weather, weather equipment. <laughs> I've often thought that if they ever remade that film, you make a hell of a Doctor Scott. <laughs> uh, we'd have to get the wig and shit like yeah, that. I'd, I'd We're going to take you back in time, not back to the future, but back. Generally speaking, right. to the past, and I remember you. Um, I remember you did the first time I can ever remember you, remember you telling jokes in front of a live studio audience. Yeah, we didn't have the cameras on at this point. The cameras were off. And you were uh, you were doing a, a show back in high school. Yeah, I remember it ages ago, and you played every part, and I I thought it was spectacular. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. do you remember that quite well? I do. do remember, I do because. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because that's more or less the beginning of your, uh, your that was. career, if you want to look at it. It was, like that, it, yeah. was. it was essentially because Mr. Emery, God bless him, he was the only guy who had his set there and went, right, you're, if you're funny and you're good at doing these parts, yeah. we want to see you do that all by yourself. Yeah. And at the time, it was funny because I had to do it following a pantomime that my whole drama class put on for other drama classes. Yeah. And then what fo fo follows that, but Mr. Emery's kind of little protege project of me doing stand up comedy. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't. I mean, and he insisted that you do it as well. well. He did insist. I mean, he said, you have to do this. You yeah. would be, you're great at these. You could remember every single joke. You know yeah. what you're doing here. The thing was, though, the thing that was different about that at the time was that it wasn't my own jokes. It was yeah. me pretty much reenacting scenes of the League of Gentlemen, Monty yeah. Python, uh, yeah, Fall of Towers. But the fact of the matter was, I've still done it, and I'm yeah. still all by myself, and I still put on exactly, a show. Exactly, man. And yeah. it's, it's like, so you, you more or less threw your influences right out there for everybody to see. Hi. Um, and I'd, I'd say that the, your style has always reminded me a lot of that, you know, and anybody that says, you know what, well, you know, his style is very much like the League of Gentlemen or Falling yeah. Towers or, or anything from Flying Circus, you yeah. know, um, is, you know, I think that's they're very important influences in the in the modern comedy scene anyway, especially mm. in the last 20, 30 years. I mean, for me, I mean, I've always had a, a great love for the kind of stuff that Rowan Atkinson was doing in Blackadder, yeah. which I thought was it was fantastic. Uh, it was fantastically written as a program, and I think it was written by um, it was Ben Elton and Richard Curtis. Ben Elton, yeah, yeah, Curtis, yeah. Um, and I could see a lot of that of the style for Towers and uh, for Forty Towers and things like that coming out back then when I yeah. saw you. Uh, in the studio over at high school, and I thought it was fantastic. And of course, I'd heard from time to time that you were doing the odd uh, open mic night at Mr. Modo's yeah. down on Lonely Road, which is now sadly closed. And Give credit to my mate Tom. He he kind of wanted to see me do stand up. So uh, when I started going there, it was uh, basically a kind of weekly thing every time we yeah. done a Monday night at Modo's doing open mic uh, stand up comedy. Yeah. And it was kind of through there that every time I went back there, my humour and my style progressed gradually yeah. to the point of where exactly, yeah, exactly. where I'm comfortable with the jokes that I'm telling now, exactly. the style of jokes I'm telling now, and then the jokes that work for me now. Uh -huh. I mean, Tom will confess that that you know I was what I was doing was just you know the beginning process to the yeah. point where up until the blame point, yeah. I was ready to know what I was wanting to do. Yeah, because I mean, covering the years from say 2007 up until maybe the last year and a half, yeah. you actually were you were on a completely different project, weren't you? You were essentially writing 
and largely directing. Would that be right? I wasn't. I or? never directed. Yeah. I I wrote. I wrote half, yeah. and I acted in a lot yeah. of Team Flash Grenade videos. Yeah. I mean, do you want to explain just to, to the audience what Team Flash Grenade is? Well, um, I didn't know there'll be a lot of people out there who know what it is, and they'll know you from, uh, uh, from obviously writing a lot of the scripts and mm. things like that from Flash Grenade. Yeah. Uh, certainly, how I got back into the, I, I was reawakened to the fact that you were still, um, that you were still being creative with comedy yeah. in general. Yeah. All kinds of comedy. And well, can you explain to the audience what Team Flash Grenade is? Well, Team Flash Grenade was a little independent comedy YouTube channel started up um, uh, by a lot of my best friends, Robert Hill, Louis Harper, and Scott Nibabi. Uh -huh. I uh, met Rab and Louis in college, yeah. and at the time they just thought, this is a crazy ginger guy who's wearing a suit, who's acting more insane than anybody else. We've got to hang out with him. Yeah. And then, um, they, I showed them the vids of me being in Little Shop of Horrors when I was in that in high school, and um, I played the part of Audrey too. Yeah. And, and of course, that entitled me to do a very evil laugh, a very yeah. harmonious evil laugh. And they heard that, and the first thing Louis asked me at the time was, "Do you think you could play the Joker?" Yeah. And I, and then it was one of those things because he said, "We've got this idea to rip, rip the shit out of taking it, uh, the Dark Knight." Mm -hmm. with yeah, yeah. Little it's, uh, Revenge of Black Bag. No, was that it? was the sequel. Uh, uh -huh. The first one was called Taking Out the Trash. Yes. Which was basically a big Batman spin-off, a big Batman parody. Yes. Basically, yeah. what would happen if it, if it was just real people as a garbage man? Yeah. I had to play. At the time, Louis was obsessed with me. He wanted me to play villains. Yeah. So the first guy he got me to play was this guy called the Black Bag. Yeah. So I turn up and he says, right, you have to put that black bag in your face. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to be able to breathe. But I thought that Black Bag was one of the greater, or he was one of the more finely dressed villains I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Did you have to melt that black bag? No, no. It looked like it had almost been melted. Right, right, okay. The first bag was an actual black bag, but yeah. this, the second bag in the, in the second movie, oh. I mean, I thought, right, we're making a sequel, we're going all out for this, we're yeah. going to proper parody the Dark Knight this time. Yeah. I'll make a mask for this, you know, I'll properly get it fit and maybe that'll be better. Wrong! Right, what I done was I got one of those cheap uh, drama masks that you buy from a joke shop, they're only a pound, yeah. and I bought one of those and I took a really hot glue adhesive and I took a black bin bag and I stuck it over it and I, adhesed, and I glued the bag onto yeah. the mask. Ah. And I, I cut the eyes out and whatnot, and it, and it fit fine, it was a good mask, but, you know, again, you're not breathing. Yeah, there's a reason you don't put bags on your face. It's because your face yeah. doesn't breathe. Your face is not designed to breathe through a bag. It's not yeah. designed to breathe through a thick layer of plastic with hot glue and a fucking black bag on your face. So, yeah. and I had my, and they want me to paint my eyes black because if I'd done that while wearing a mask, my eyes look huge. Yeah, and I'm doing this. And it's the most uncomfortable filming experience. Right before we do something, Louis would go, Right guys, you ready? And I'd go, Louis, can I just do one thing before we start? He went, Yeah, sure. Take the mask off. <gasps> <gasps> just, just have a breather, yeah. Just, I mean, I, I was seriously going to consider now putting an inhaler in uh -huh. the pocket just so I go, Go. Yeah, let's let, let roll, roll the film. Quickly, go, quickly, go, go, yeah, go, yeah. go, go. go. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, I actually remember uh, it was around 40 videos were released for Flash Grenade and. Uh, and some of them were fantastic. Yeah, the Coco competition to this day is one of my favourite YouTube videos. It's in my favourites yeah. if you check my channel. Yeah. Tremendous video. The alcoholic, um, you know, we, we got a real kick out of that Catholic comment. Yeah. We thought it was hilarious. Um, mm. well, we just didn't expect you to say it. We're like, whoa. Well, no, no, no. I wanted to make, I was, I was burgeoning on doing a Catholic comment, yeah. you know. Not in any disregard to anybody who's a Catholic. Oh, exactly, yeah. It was just, I thought, you know what? What's the worst sort of people you want to meet at an Alcoholics Anonymous? As long as you come away from a discussion or a film or a TV show or a piece of music, anything, still thinking about that ten, even five yeah. seconds later. Yeah. You know, you hear something on the radio that's just such a derivative throwaway, like was that what Nicki Minaj has come out with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a song I, I, you know, I... Why is the paper talking about Cheryl Cole getting in a car crash outside McDonald's? Yeah. She should have been attention to the fucking drive through You know, exactly. that's it. Yeah, it's right. it's, it's, yeah, yeah. Who, who yeah. gives a fuck? I mean, yeah. honestly, there's worse people in the world, and out of nowhere we have to pay attention to what Cheryl Cole's doing oh, just yeah, because exactly. she broke her nose while driving her Fiesta trying to get a Big Mac. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sympathising with that. Yeah, I, I, I don't care enough. I don't, I don't care for her yeah. as a person. If she dies, we'll Sorry for Why do people find her attractive? Why do you, she looks like a skin chihuahua? I know. Is it, she, she's just not a good. I need mean, that voice as well. Get the London look. No, fuck off. Oh, huh? oh no, yeah, no. See, what was it? The thing that Frank Wall said. He was like, a pair of tits on a broomstick. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's um, yeah, it's, it's strange. It's strange. Right. It's, you get an interviewer asking, uh, you know someone about ten questions, and they give one word answers. Yeah, yeah. You would have one really great question. And one really great answer, yeah. and that's going to do it for anyone that's listening to this. Yeah. Ultimately, 
my philosophy is sticking to these rigid guidelines for things. It's not my style. And yeah. I think there's people out there that do that very well. Yeah. But that's not my style at all. So yeah. I like to keep things casual, keep things laid back. We're in a pub, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's that's that's my style and that's, that's the way it should be done. That I've, that I listened to radio a lot when I was a kid, I listened to radio yeah. too when I was a kid. Religiously. <laughs> but <laughs> like, like, yeah. Bazinga. Hypocrisy! No, exactly. My dad still listens to it. Um, well, um, militantly. Militantly, um, right. And uh, he's a secular militant when it comes right. to Radio 2. <laughs> uh, Jeremy Vine and all yeah, that. You gotta love him. I listen to that and I listen to a lot of Ricky Gervais podcasts. Uh, no, his podcasts are genius though. They're fantastic. Carl Pilkins and also, I absolutely Spill.com. Like. Spill.com do movie reviews. Yeah, I know. I'm familiar yeah. with Spill. I like Spill. Oh, yeah. Spill. And I, I but they have me their, Oh, yeah, yeah. But they have uh, podcasts as well, which mm. are just still frames, which are like mine. Yeah. They have one called Let's Do It. Yeah. And they'll, have, and they'll be talking about that. They also have one called The, the League of Extremely Ordinary Gentlemen, <laughs> which uh, is fantastic. Um, and I might even link it in the description. Yeah, 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 why not? Uh, actually, I don't know if I will get enough views. Yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> um, no, I might do. Um, you know, so it's largely influenced off that very casual yeah, 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 back, yeah. and I'm yeah. not going to be like, welcome to interview yeah, 45 3.82. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm happy. Really, we're, doing, cool we're doing 500. I'm having fun. Yeah, yeah, you're doing good. Yeah, yeah. And, um, thank you. What are your plans for the future then? Because I know that you've, you've been doing a lot of stuff this festival and you're going to have a couple of months because uh, it tends to be in Edinburgh that we do the festival, we do the build up to the festival, maybe a little bit of wind down time in some of the smaller venues, but it doesn't really pick up again until Christmas when mm. people start to do stand up and yeah. they, they, there's almost like that kind of three month hiatus for uh, live comedy in the city or uh, you tend to find a lot of people have pre-booked the autumn prior to the summer and mm. it's completely chock a block for those right. three months. So what are your plans for the next couple of months? Plans up to the uh, next couple of not for the next twenty years, the next couple of months. The next couple of months I'm gonna to learn to drive. Yeah. One of the, one of the things that I, I've kind of been putting this off for years. I mean I can drive, I just need to sit the fitty because at the moment I have there's lots of spots open up for gigs elsewhere more than just yeah. uh, Edinburgh. Like you've got gigs in Glasgow and Vernes, all Absolutely, these sorts of places. Yeah, huge, and I need huge to stand up uh, seen in Glasgow. And I and I've performed in Glasgow as well. You have? Yes. Tell us about that. It was my first it was my third gig and uh-huh. uh, it was the most terrifying experience I've ever had in my life because yeah. Glasgow has a reputation. Yeah. If they don't like you, they hate you. You know Yeah, the, where were you at? Performing? It was in a place called the Flying Duck. It was Flying Duck. It was downstairs at Renfield Street. Yeah. And I got to perform there, and uh, I had to perform it on the side of the bar, which looked like a kit, which was decorated to look like a kitchen. Yeah. They had these door frames put it up in a fucking microwave door that had the poster for Jaws hanging yeah. out of it. It was strung up with Christmas, uh, Christmas lights to look like a border. Yeah. And while that was boarded off, they had the microphone that had the PA system, which was rigged up to the back of the bar, yeah. as well as to the front of the stage. Yeah. And I spoke to the guy who was organising it, Gordon, and he said, oh, I will only get there, like, 10, 15 people, it shouldn't be a big night. Yeah. This place was filled with 40 and 50 glass regions expecting comedy. Wow. It was absolutely terrifying. And this is a Friday night? It was a, It was on St. Patrick's Day. Christ. It was, yeah, it in was Glasgow. In right, yeah. St. Patrick's Day. In a place called the Flying Duck. In a place called the Flying Duck. Yeah. I'm doing comedy at, on St. Patrick's Day. A teetotal guy mm-hmm. trying to tell these jokes. Yeah. And uh, I'm speaking to the guy who's organising it. And he said to me, So, Ross, um, what kind of jokes do you tell? And it was pretty much the same I told you. Very much old style humour. Very much neurotical. And, stuff. Yeah. and he said to me, The worst thing you could ever say for a comedian who's about to giggle at you. He went, Oh, that's great. I look forward to it. No, don't, no, 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 no. That puts pressure. Yeah. That's anticipation. Then he yeah. made it worse because in Glasgow, he goes up to the mic and he says, Okay, please welcome all the way from Edinburgh. Oh, you couldn't have felt more sort of quaint. I could have, I, I literally, I could have walked on there just like a, a goalie walk and I would have made more out of the room. Yeah. But I, that, that was the second All the way from a 45 minute drive uh, away. Yeah, <laughs> if, uh, if the traffic's bad, half an hour if you're lucky. The worst of all, worst thing of all, that's not even the worst uh, intro I've ever had for a gig. When I'd done my first ever gig, the guy that um, yeah. brought me on stage, he went, I'm looking forward to this guy. He's from Leith. I just, uh, I'm gonna get hit, I'm gonna get Are killed. You? Yes. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm from Leith. Fun, fun fact of the day. Yeah. yeah. Leaf's fun. I, no, I, I think Leaf is one of the most beautifully cultural cities on the goddamn planet. Yeah. It no. is technically still a city. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I used to tell jokes about, I'm telling jokes about Leaf in my stand up. Yeah. I do this one bit in my routine where I joke about the central bar. Yeah. I've never been in there, there's a reason, you know, but I don't. I, I, it's I nuts. Joke, yeah. I joke about yeah. it. Yeah, or, or, or I forget the name of that place in Leaf where licensing laws were that 
the Leaf had different licensing laws from the city, yeah, and you yeah. had to move about six feet up the bar when it got to about half. It had a white bar hour. painted across the, the yeah. side of the bar, yeah. Because after I was that point, it was no longer legal to drink in Edinburgh, but it was legal yeah. to drink in Leaf. Yes. And that was the boundary for Leaf, so people would literally scoot along to the end of the bar, yeah. and then you could keep drinking. I was like, that is fantastic. I, I still wish that we had. Um, better licensing laws that we do because our, our licensing laws are I, shit. Again, I, I personally don't care. I mean, I'm not an alcoholic. I don't yeah. drink alcohol. I don't. You did play an alcoholic. I, do, I did play an alcoholic, yeah. but, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've played an alcoholic. I've played Shane McGowan. And Ironically, played an alcoholic better than most alcoholics do. Yeah, it's, it's just because you pick certainly up... certainly more dialogue and less urination. You pick up on things that these alcohol that people that drink do, though. Uh -huh. That's what the thing is. You look at them and you just go, why on earth do you do that? Yeah. And they, the thing is, they don't know. But I do know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see them on the buses kicking around in tracksuits from yeah. 1994. Mm. Oh, sort yeah. of purple and green. Just like something off of, you know, something off that Lonely Island music video. Of and, they always look, just in the and they always look like they've just woken up, you know. Yeah. Yeah, or they're kind of like go to bed. I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, probably because they have just woken up. They're probably been sleeping on the fucking bus. Probably. Get, getting their, their money's worth out of that one pound forty. Those whatever. are my kind of people. But yeah. no. Back, yeah. to, back to my uh, answer. Yeah, um, I'm going to try that. Uh, yeah, got, so I'll, I'll, re, I'll reiterate that. Yeah, yeah. So, so your plans for the future, basically, you're just going to be. I'm going to learn how to drive. I'm going to try and get. I'm going to write more. I've got. I've got various projects that I have to help write out. For you're going to write more, yeah. Uh, so that, I've got that to look forward to. I'm going to try and gig more in Edinburgh. I need to get more gigs sorted. Now that the. I mean, the, the whole plan was, I never got in, sadly I never got any gigs during the festival, my, both my gigs got cancelled. Mm -hmm. So my plan is to try and gig as much as I can in September in, uh -huh. in the Edinburgh based clubs. Because, you know, we've got a good comedy circuit going around and hopefully if I get that done, I'll be able to pick up for next year. Yeah. And uh, I've, got, I've got that to look forward to, you know, so I've got, I've got plenty of time to write, plenty of yeah. time to think of something new that's funny. That's brilliant, yeah. yeah. So, um, you have any more plans for uh, Flash Grenade or what? what well, you, you did say earlier on that you hoped you guys would get back together and really well, just get I mean, back in the, uh, we haven't really, back yeah, to the drawing board. We haven't really stopped. It's yeah. just, we have ideas, we just haven't gotten around to making them. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they've been busy with college. And uh, that took up a lot of their time. They, they were filming other projects outside of Flash Grenade. Yeah. What they were doing was they were filming serious stuff for what they needed to help yeah, them pass. Yeah, I think it's the one with Martin Dick in it. Actually. Yes, um, I haven't seen it. That, what was that called? I, I don't know. I haven't proper, properly seen it. It's a very serious film. I saw it. It's very... Um, there's, to my knowledge, no dialogue in it. Apart from he starts this sort of druidic chant at one point. Yeah. Which is extremely... Uh, Weird. Discombobulating. Yeah. Because I've not had a chance to use that word for a few months, so Fair that enough. is the way I would describe it. Use as many use as many fancy words around me. I'm very intimidatious. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm totally fine with that. It's been awesome talking to you today, man. Thank you um, very much, Liz. I, you've you've answered my questions wonderfully, and uh, you know, um, you, you don't have anything that you want to ask me. Well, other than can you pay my parking ticket? Are you parked outside? Well, I'm, I'm parked somewhere. Actually, I think I did see a tow truck when I was out there. Yeah. We, should, we should probably go. No. Actually, uh, well, well, that is my car. It is your car. Well, it, 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 if, if they don't, they're going to tow truck the car with another tow truck. Yeah. Which oh. is going to be a beautiful sight to it's see. a Lamborghini. Yeah. Was your one? Oh, no. Yeah, like no. I drive a Lambo. Yeah. yeah I'm, I, sat, I, I'm sitting here with torn jeans and a bad haircut. You honestly think I'm torn a Lamborghini? I, my haircut's worse and my jeans are torn at the balls. Oh, are they? So, uh, oh, is that what it was? I, yeah. I, thought, I thought you stitched that back together. No, no, no I keep it like Please that. Please shave down there, man. That's I a know. horrible sink. I know. It's just a tough. It's just a <laughs> Yeah, but dude, um, it's been amazing. Now you have to listen. To this this is a handshake. That's that's a handshake right, right there, and that's gonna blow my fucking speaker. That's gonna <laughs> no, be worth it. I really want to thank you for coming on today, man. It's been an absolute pleasure. Cheers, thanks. I've had a, it was fun. It, it it has been fun. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I did, yeah. Okay, folks. Well, we got some new content coming out mid time next week. I uh, hope you stay tuned in for that. Thanks a lot for coming, or viewing, or listening, or whatever you want to say. Any last words? Uh, this is a shameless, a shameful plug, but I'm I've not got about to, to murder him. I'm no, no, no. Just uh, any last words? If you're interested to find out more about me, go to my Facebook page called Ross Hepburn Stand Up Comedian. Uh, it will be inundated with updates where I'm gigging. If there'll be jokes, there'll be videos of some kind. I don't know yet. I haven't worked around to it, but if you're ever interested, Ross Hepburn Stand Up Comedian on Facebook. Okay. That's fantastic. Make sure you take yourselves over there. Uh, to Ross's stand-up page on Facebook. You also have your um, channel, Team Flash Grenade, that you're no doubt aware of. It's yeah. been linked in a couple of my videos in the past. Uh, thanks a lot for listening. If you want any more content or news about upcoming sessions that we're going to be recording, head over to Shadow Channel 
forward slash Shadow Channel on Facebook. So let me try that just one more fucking time. www or World Wide Web to cut out, you know, six syllables. Uh, www dot. Facebook.com forward slash Shadow Channel. Thanks a lot for coming. Thanks for listening, gents and ladies. And we'll see you later on. Muchas gracias.